Clendon. Tanakwe. Tanakwe, Mr. Speaker. Kete mihi o te rā kia koutou. Sir, it's a, a pleasure, a genuine pleasure and privilege to speak on behalf of the Green Party in support, to affirm our support for this legislation. And may I add our welcome to the representatives of Naiwi, Nahapu, of Tamaki Makaro, of the dignitaries and the other stakeholders from Auckland, from Tamaki Makaro, who have made the effort to, um, to be in the House today. A welcome to our place and indeed welcome to your place. It's a pleasure to have you here. Sir, this bill has some unique features, not least of all in that, unlike other settlement bills, it does not in fact settle historic grievances, historic claims. As the Minister has accurately pointed out, um, this is a redress bill. The individual claims of iwi and hapu relating to breaches of the treaty over time are being dealt with in a parallel process, some of them at a, um, an advanced stage of, um, of settlement. Others have some way to go yet. But it is, um, it's been described as an elegant solution, and I actually told Toko that. It is a, it's an interesting approach, and I think a very positive one, and it will have some very positive outcomes to it. So in one of the, um, I think the, the submission last year from the Tamaki Collective noted that this legislation, as it will pass today, is an outcome of negotiation, of diplomacy and of compromise. And that is clearly true as one reads the content and the spirit of the bill. There has been negotiation, high-level diplomacy within and between iwi and hapu and other stakeholders, and of course compromise. And so in politics and political circles, compromise often has a negative connotation to it. But I think compromise arrives at a consensus position. A, con a position where perhaps nobody has got everything they might have wanted, but everybody can see that there's something in it, that this is a, a solution, an outcome that people can live with and that serves the interests of the maximum number of people. And I think in that sense it's a good outcome. The, it's a, um, a testament to the power, indeed, of negotiation, of diplomacy, of compromise and of achieving consensus as to what is the best way forward out of very complex and very difficult um, situations. So the, the preamble Mench talks about the Monga and Motu which are affected in this legislation and named in it as being Tonga in relation to which Iwi and Hapu have always maintained a re unique relationship and where those Iwi and Hapu have honoured their intergenerational role as kaitiaki. And so I'd just like to take a moment to reflect on the, on the nature of kaitiaki tanga. And I would not presume to, to claim or claim to have any profound insights into the depth of the meaning of that word or of those words of kaitiaki, kaitiaki tanga. But so one thing I am sure of is that an assertion of kaitiaki statement, uh, status is an assertion of rights, of a bundle of rights to occupy, to use, um, to manage. But also, I think profoundly, it is a, an acknowledgement of responsibility, of obligation. And I think those who would criticise the, the Māori assertion of rights miss the fact that it also is an acceptance of significant responsibility and obligation to the past, to the present and to the future. And I think it, as much the, the sense of responsibility, obligation that drives Māori that is one of the key drivers of Māori determination to see our grievances settled and to see um, rights, our wrongs put right. Then I think it's important to continue to recognise that and to perhaps reflect that we have um, there. It's a very complex matter, complex situations and relationships that have evolved over time. So the, the legislation speaks of restoring ownership of certain monga and motu, and that's a word we don't often see, ownership. That's about um, as strong a statement as one could wish to see in a piece of legislation related to tiriti uh, breaches over time. It provides mechanisms by which iwi and hapu can exercise mana whenua and kaitiakitanga. And of course we have the, the trustee model and the other various um, and quite complex uh, mechanisms by which the, the spirit and the intention of this bill will be implemented. And it talks about the, um, the first refusal regime, which will enable those iwi and hapu to build an economic base for their members. And that's a critically important part of this whole. The fact that 
We are tired of hearing about Māori at the wrong end of all the social statistics and empowering Māori by putting back into their hands the means to build an economic base in a Māori way, in, in a way that serves the interests and the beliefs and the values of Māoridom, is a very powerful part of this legislation. Um, it's very timely in a way that the I'm personally pleased, and I'm, I'm sure we all are, that um, this legislation is being passed today. This parliament is very close to its end, only three more sitting days. And again, the, the submission from the collective last year made a note that there's a significant opportunity cost. Any delay in passing this legislation puts back the time at which the, the iwi and hapu can begin to build their economic base as well as having their mana whenua status acknowledged. So it is good, it is a pleasure genuinely to see this passing um, before the expiry of this parliament. So that it's probably hard to overestimate the significance of some of the maunga, the motu, which are dealt with in this legislation, not only to Māori, but to the sense of identity, the sense of place of all Aucklanders and indeed all New Zealanders. I think you'd be hard pressed to think of a single more iconic or more representative landscape feature to all Aucklanders than Rangitoto. It is the defining, in my view at least, the single defining feature of that area, of that city, of that region. And I think that the other, um, the Monga, the, the Cones, the Motu, um, Motutapu, Monga Fao, Takarunga, these are places with which um, Aucklanders identify very closely. Aucklanders Māori, Pākehā, Tauiwi. These are places that define what it means to be a resident in that place and to feel some attachment to it. And so I think the importance of, this, um, of the way in which this settlement, this redress bill, has advanced is very difficult to overestimate. It has put in place um, the mechanisms, as I said, it is the outcome of some very, very hard work, I suspect, over time uh, for a lot of parties. I think I commented at the earlier reading that while on the one hand I would very much like to have been on the, sele on the select committee, um, I also recognise that uh, it would have been a significant challenge to the members of that select committee to shepherd this legislation through in a way that continued to be acceptable to all parties. And I acknowledge the work of the select committee and indeed of the Minister in successfully bringing this um, to the House in a form that I believe will be acceptable to all parties. So the work, a great deal of work has been done, but in another very important way, the work really is only beginning, and that has been alluded to by a number of speakers. Uh, the collective has a significant task ahead of it, as does the council, as do other um, stakeholders in this, the NGOs, uh, Department of Conservation and so on, all of the people who will have to continue in a spirit of cooperation to ensure that the, the spirit and uh, letter of this legislation is implemented in a timely fashion and in a way that does serve the collective good, the good of the, the most. So on behalf of the Greens, sir, again, I reiterate our absolute and enthusiastic support for this legislation and we offer our very best wishes to all of those for whom the work is just beginning. Kia ora. Call the Honourable Tau Hanari. Tanakwe. Kia ora.